Hello friends, this video on diversity in living world part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us talk about yet another feature or characteristic that defines life, or that distinguishes life from non-living things. That is cellular organization of the body. Now, so far, I have spoken about quite a few things like the metabolic reactions. We have also spoken about reproduction. We spoke about growth. Now, whenever we speak about all these things, where do all these things actually happen? When I talk about growth, what was growth? It was nothing but increase in number of cells or enlargement of cells. When I talk about reproduction, so at what level reproduction start? So even for reproduction also, if we talk about cells, right? So if I talk about sexual reproduction, it is like a male cell and a female sex cell. They will combine together, they will fuse together to form the new organism. So there also we talk about cells. When I talk about the metabolic reactions, where do these reactions take place? Inside our body. So inside our body where? Inside the cells. So whatever we talk about, everything happens inside the cells. So the cells are the one or the presence of the cells itself is a characteristic of life. When I talk of any non-living thing, I do not talk of cells or tissues because there is no living component present inside a non-living organism. So whenever I think of life, I think of its basic constituent and its basic constituent is a cell. The cells can be again of many different types. For example, inside the human body, we have so many cells of different shapes and sizes performing different functions like the nerve cell, the fat cell, which is quite bigger in size, the ovum, sperm, bone cell, blood cells. So there are a variety of cells, each performing its own specific function. So cellular organization of the body also is a characteristic feature of living organism. Now last but not the least, that is consciousness. This is a very, very important characteristic of life. When I say consciousness, what comes to your mind? Consciousness means being aware of anything and everything that is happening around us. When I say that, uh, I was quite conscious about my looks. What does that mean? That means that I really bother about how I look. I really bother about how I look to others, right? So whenever I say consciousness, it means that you are bothered about things happening around you. That is consciousness. So in living, for a non-living object, for example, a bottle of water or, or a pen lying on a table, so do you think that pen has any kind of consciousness? The pen doesn't bother about what is happening around it, right? But when I talk about life, when I talk about living organism, they actually do bother about things happening around them and they also react to the things happening around them. For example, so we can say that ability to sense the surroundings and respond to them. That is what we talk about in consciousness. For example, when a person gets an electric shock, what happens to him? He immediately responds to it by jumping off from that point. So that means he is aware what is happening around him. Or when a guy sees a tiger coming towards him, the guy starts running immediately. Why? It is his response to whatever is happening around him. Or when you suddenly step on fire and you feel the heat and immediately take your step back. Why is it so? Because you can feel that heat. When you see something very delicious in front of you, your mouth starts watering. So again, you are reacting to your surroundings, right? So this consciousness is again something which happens only in case of living organisms. Now, when I talk about human beings, it is the endocrine system and the nervous system together which give rise to this, these consciousness. Right? We have already learned about the nervous system and the endocrine system, right? When I talk about, like, many of us under different situations, depending upon our surroundings, sometimes we feel very happy. For example, you scored really well in your exams. So what is that? That is your surrounding. So how do you react to it? You are very happy. Sometimes you are very sad due to something or 
you are hungry, happy, sleepy. So all these kind of feelings come because of it, it, these are all governed by your endocrine system, the endocrine glands, which give rise to different types of feelings. One of the best things that human beings have, that is the ability to think, that comes from our brain. So that is the nervous system. So the nervous system and the endocrine system takes care of this consciousness part and consciousness is a very important feature of life. It characterizes life. So what do we conclude from this discussion? We, why, why, what were we discussing? We were discussing what are the things that can actually tell which is a living thing and which is a non-living thing. So we can say that living organisms are self-replicating, evolving and self-regulating interactive systems capable of responding to external stimuli. So when I say self-replicating, that means they can replicate themselves. They can produce new organisms similar to themselves. So we are talking about the ability to reproduce. Evolving, that means they can give rise to new things. That means we already studied about evolution, right? So from simpler organisms, gradually over a period of time with small, small variations, over a long large number of years can give rise to new organisms so they are they can evolve they can give rise to evolution self-regulating interactive systems that means they can regulate themselves they can control different types of processes inside themselves be it the metabolic processes or be it control and coordination so they can handle everything together capable of responding to external stimuli Responding to stimuli is nothing but the nervous system. So that is how we can define living organisms. So these are some of the traits which define life or which defines the living organisms. Now that we have got a fair idea about what are living organisms, so I think that we can now go ahead with how are we going to study the diversity of life. I mean, the variety of life which we have around us. How are we going to study about each of them? Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.